Greg, I know you were looking a little, a little higher up the rankings, man. You wanted, you know, to, to get a ranked opponent in this one. That didn't come to fruition. What was what was your reaction in the matchup? Be humble. Be humble, you know. Um, sometimes you don't get what you want. And uh, to throw a tantrum would uh, be out of character. So I just decided to listen to my coaches who got me here and uh, just heed the words of my agents and take the ring time, you know. Um, it's time for me to get in the ring, show some skills, make some right decisions, move towards dominating in the top 15, not just competing or fighting in the top 15. Were you able to have that reaction right away, or were there moments where you're like, what, what are they doing with me? I was super pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a five-minute it was a five minute situation, but yeah, no. Off the rap, I was just like, all right, here we go again. So he's going to be a can as soon as I'm done. Man, they're going to be mad at me again. I got to go through this process, but then I was just like, but why? You know, let's just think about it. Like before, before I go pick up the phone and get crazy, let's just think about why. Like this is what got you here. Be consistent. You know, this is a process. Always readjusting, reassessing, not slipping back in the old ways. So it's funny what you said there. So like going in, he's an undefeated contender. Going out, he's a can. Is he's, that the way? He's a can. <laughs> he was trash. <laughs> he's terrible. Even though his record's way bigger, he's fought a hundred times. He's still worse than you. Blah blah blah. You know how that goes. There's no, there's no win for me until I fight for the belt, which is coming. What's it like being in Boston? You've been here plenty of times in the NFL. Uh, how, how does the emotions feel this week? It's so much cooler than being in the NFL, bro. <laughs> I'm here all week. I get to be all in the ambiance. I've ran around Cambridge, got my mileage in around the lake. You know, I actually got to be a part of the city. You know, and it, uh, it kind of, it kind of just, it adds to the effect. You know, like uh the build up for the fight for the fighter. You know, you don't just fly in on the weekend, sat Tom Brady a couple of times and dip out. Right. Yeah. You were saying that, you know, you accepted this lower ranked guy, but you still want that bigger name. After this, should you win, are you going to have to say, like, listen, I'm sorry, it's time for me to fight up those rankings? Not at all, man. Because uh, in finding that uh, peace in my violence and finding that perspective, I realized what I've been saying all along. I'm about to fight everybody, guys. We ain't got number time. Anybody that wants it can get it four times this year. And shout out to the greatest boss on the planet, Dana White, is the man. Please let me fight again in December. I want to do it five times. Y'all y'all love me. I love y'all. Like In Vegas? The end of the year. You called it. You said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> say in Vegas, whatever. I'm down. You I'll show up. 10% of that, man. <laughs> Quick, hey, knockout bonus, right? I got you. Thanks. That's Appreciate a deal. It. Did you were hoping to be on the pay-per-view card, or did you like fighting on the ESPN cards? Like, because this is your third, I think, ESPN, not ESPN Plus, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. I'm not really keeping track. But yeah, man, when you're on the, one of the best net, not even when you're on the best network on TV, bro, how can you really complain, dude? You know, it was a uh, FX, and there was a bunch of other places, and now I'm on, I'm on where I was just playing before. You know, I didn't, I didn't skip a beat. So, so fighting I'm on, down. Just fighting on a pay-per-view card, like. That anything you look forward to? I still actually don't really understand what that means. Sure. Yeah, I'm still kind of relatively new, so. You're basically behind a paywall. Like, someone uh -huh. has to pay $40 to watch the top last five fights. Or you, don't, $50. you don't have to pay now? Well, you just pay for watch it on ESPN. As opposed to you, call, you go to ESPN Plus, you pay $50. Do I get paid during pay per view? I don't think if you're not a champion. Oh, no. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't care then. <laughs> I'm here to get paid and knock people out, dude. Yeah. You talk about wanting those matchups, the higher ranked matchups. We've had plenty of people call you out. Have you ever thought about dropping a call out yourself? Who called me out? You talking about Derek Lewis and all these other guys? Yeah. I believe Todd Duffy was one of them, too. Yeah. Who? Todd Duffy. He has a seven second knockout on his in one of his. Oh, uh, homeboy guys. that don't got the record no more because uh, ATT took that from him. Um, <laughs> shout out Mosby Doll. Um, you know what? At the end of the day, dude, it's about being prepared. Like, you guys don't want to, most of you guys want to see me get knocked out, and I still love you. But the fans, they don't want to see somebody in there just clowning around getting knocked out. Like, that would be disrespectful to the sport. And I don't know if you guys remember my whole point and objective in this. Takeover, so we can call, so we'll call it, is to earn it, to show you that I was meant to be here, to show you that I didn't take it. This is not a CM Punk. I earned it. I paid every single due. I went through the circuit as an amateur. I fought my way up on the contender series like everybody else has to. I've defended my position as a UFC fighter like everybody else does with regular opponents. Because who the hell walks in and fights Derek Lewis? You know what I mean and. 
now that I'm, you know, getting my medal. You know, I'm, I'm clashing with the middle class of the UFC. I'm starting to develop, and when it comes to a point where I can, you know, handle myself in the ring, be professional, put on a show, that's when we're going to go to the top. And it's not going to stop, you know. It's going to be the same scale as this. It's going to be every two months. I'm going to knock out Derek, knock out Ngannou, knock out Stipe. It's just going to be, eh. I might submit somebody, you don't know. I got a new BJJ coach, shout out Devin Moultrie, but you get my point. Like, it's just, it's not going to stop, you know. And we all know I live in the gym, so the, the work is just going to continue, you know. Speaking of the gym, uh, American Top Team, big topic right now is this whole Colby Covington riff with the team. Does, does that impact you at all? Just, you know, because I know you're friends with everyone at the gym. Like, how, how has that impacted you? Perfectly fine with it, brother. Do you talk to Colby at all? Like, I know it's Colby's my guy, dude. And yeah. Mosby Dawes my guy. And I don't really talk to the Diamond that much, but I support him and he's my teammate, you know. Yeah. And How has that been, though? Because you're friends with both guys. And that probably puts you in a difficult situation at times just because, you know, there's obviously some bad blood there. I think a difficult situation would be being on the bottom when a big heavyweight's on top of you. This is just going to work. You know, it's uh, somebody being mad that the coffee mug is, I mean, the coffee pot's not filled. Like, you left the coffee overnight. Mm -hmm. This is a small thing, dude. These guys are professionals. They come to work every single day. We're racking six figures. Like John Jones just said on this one of his posts, we're making money out here because we are the best. We work harder than anybody else. And you, three guys, the Diamond, Mosby Dahl, Kobe Covington, What's their MO, man? They're always in the gym. They're always fighting. They're always putting in more work than everybody else. To question these guys and their motives and how they act in the gym is the same thing as questioning me and my athletic prowess. It's Greg, a joke. Sorry. Sorry, Greg. Oh, please. <laughs> You're a huge name. Everyone has an opinion about you. There's one camp that says unbelievable elite athlete could be a champion one day, and they want to see you succeed. There's another camp that never wanted to give you a shot from the very beginning. It says, hey, he's had some run-ins with the law. He doesn't deserve it. It's a privilege to fight in the UFC. Can you convert those people over to give you a second chance? And if so, how do you do that? I say this. If uh, we're going to implement a rule that anybody that's had trouble with the law can't fight, I'm down. I'll quit. If we're going to implement a rule that everybody else, anybody that's been in trouble can't fight, I'll quit. It's not gonna happen, man. It's not the reality of things. We're human. 100% of us are flawed. So I approach this like any situation in life. I had to keep moving forward and appeasing the people that are supporting me, man. There's too many people in this world that want to see me win. And uh, I might get knocked out, man. So you gotta buy a ticket to find out either way. <laughs> so tune in. Please keep rooting against me. I love you for rooting against me because it lines my boss's pockets. When you say finding peace in the violence, that's something that, that's kind of like your mantra that you got into this I point. found is peace in the violence. Is that something you had while you were playing football as well, or is this something you learned along the way, and how did that kind of come into your life? Yeah, that's a complex answer, man. Uh, initially, in football, I had it, but it was a different way. It wasn't peace and violence. It was, I was home in destruction. You know, it was, I was a darker soul, man. I was the Kraken. I was the devil's pet. You know, it consumed me in a different way. And um, coming to MMA and having to temper myself, you know, being around the most dangerous people in the world while actually seeing these guys be humble and approach life in a way that I've never even thought about was eye-opening. So I had to adjust my perspective to survive. I had to adjust my perspective to continue to gain. And in that, I found peace in the violence. I found something that I had never had in football, uh, the ability to weather any storm and continue, you know, in my, on my own path, in my own way, because I'm, I'm righteous, because I support my team, because it's my family. It's about what I'm in and my journey and accepting people and their opinions about my journey. How refreshing is that for you? Because a lot of people search for that and can't find it. You've obviously found it. You know, how refreshing is that for you? It feels good, man. And I feel like, you know, it's the only way to survive. Because uh, hatred, man, all this hatred in the world, all this trash talk and all this evil, man, it kills you inside. You know, our star player is something we have to nurture with love and acceptance, you know, whether it's good or bad, because life's this, man. It's not this. So there's going to be ups and downs. But if you can't balance it, you can't progress. And if I can't progress, I'm the one getting knocked out. Where do you get your positivity from? You reference a lot, you, you know, finding a way to take a lot of these situations and, and to putting a positive spin on that. Is there someone in particular that's influenced you to be that way? Or do you read a lot of books? Like, where does this come from? Despite this guy, I mean, other than this guy, <laughs> you guys, yeah. you beat me down so much. You've hurt me in so many ways. You've tried to paint me in so many ways that I am not. And um, when you're at the bottom, dude, and everything's in pieces, you have to realize 
there's nobody to blame. There's no faults to be had. I made every single decision, good, bad, or indifferent. Whether you think something happened or I think something happened, whatever really happened, I made those decisions. No matter what it was, it's my choice. And when you start to accept stuff like that, man, it becomes easy. It's not, the blame's not on you guys. Y'all are doing your job, man. Just like I'm doing my job. Was it, was it always as easy for you? To no, no. I was super angry. I don't know if you guys ever <laughs> watched YouTube. <laughs> uh, Opie would have came in here. You know, no comment. Next question. No comment. Next question. No comment. Next question. But you know, it's just that's like that's like me. Um, the other Juan Adams blaming me for him having a concussion. Like he signed a contract. Like it's at the end of the day. Like I was telling him. Like we knock each other out and then come shake hands, dude. That's the ultimate level of freaking humanity, dude. That's crazy. People, people are – one second, please. People are fighting out here for scuffing your shoes, man. People are getting killed out here for being in their house, doing what they're supposed to be doing by their rights, dude. Like, this is a crazy place. Anytime and any place where you can shake a man's hand after going to war, it's a beautiful thing, bro. And you start to see, like he was saying, like I was telling him, that you start to see that peace and the violence. You start to see a new place where you can grow. And once you develop, it's just a drug, dude. It's like – Getting better every day. It's like get, you guys getting better at your job. You want to go seek seminars. You want to go seek how to figure it out. So that's how, that's the process. Please, I apologize. No, it's my fault. Um, do you remember the moment for you when that sort of changed? Do you remember when you decided, like, man, I just got to pick up these pieces. I got to find that that piece. I think it was a six month period, bro, where I didn't know where I was gonna go. You know, and to be honest, it was uh, it was darkness and it was light, and they were both real alluring. There was checks behind both sides, you know, and it was just. I had to decide where I wanted to go and where I was going to grow more. And having a daughter, Mia Hope, shout out Mia Hope Hardy. Having a son, Dallas Carter, Hardy, changes your perspective on everything because those are the people that look up to you now. Like I was always the guy looking up to somebody, trying to figure out my way. Now I have people looking up to me. So do you feel like every decision you make, you think about them first, so it's yeah. a lot easier to, to find that piece? If I raise my right hand, he raises his right hand. <laughs> if I do this, he does this. Like. He's going to do everything that I do. She's going to do everything that I do, man. And when you got that kind of pressure on you, you have a choice. You can either continue to fall into your own selfish and evil ways or adapt and adjust and make note. Hold yourself accountable. Great. You've been a model citizen since you joined MMA. Do you think you get unfair treatment by fans and media members that when other guys have gotten in trouble, it doesn't get brought up every time? <laughs> God bless them, man. Uh, no, not at all. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. And I am more than a king. I'm king of kings. I've done more than people have done <laughs> in three lifetimes. So to approach it like that would be selfish, you know? It's like asking for all the, it's like asking to be president and saying, oh, well, you can't talk about me, it's, it's illegal. <laughs> Gotta be a Republican or it's illegal. Like, it's the land of opportunity, dude. I'm American with a M, not an A. Like, it's your freedom of speech, your freedom of right. I support it, I love it. Do it, you know? I'm gonna take it humbly. Another angle with this fight is, obviously you come from the NFL background. Your opponent comes from a rugby background. You know, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, they say that rugby players are tougher, better athletes. Mm -hmm. We in America think that's crazy. We think Americans have the best athletes, especially NFL players, all pro defensive end. Is this gonna settle the debate? Who's tougher, football or rugby? There's no debate. I'm the toughest man on the planet, <laughs> but, you know, I give a huge shout out to the rugby guys because Alex Corbex is one of my good friends from Florida and he introduced me to that rugby lifestyle and boys are soldiers. And I believe you can have a mutual respect for something and still, you know, have a sense of superiority, but. Like little brother. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, not even little brother, like brother, you know, big brother, big brother, like uh, I'm the most dangerous. No, I'm the most dangerous. and. I just have mad respect, you know, and especially for the way that they carry themselves. Because, you, you know, this guy is not talking trash so far. And most rugby guys that I know, they're not, they're humble, they're respectful, and then they bring war. And that's just something that I, that's, that, that, that is the prince of war. That is the embodiment of the love that I'm bringing. I'm going to break your face and shake your hand. We're going to move on to better things. And that's the, I think that's the ultimate athlete, man. So get ready, dude. There's going to be some beautiful stuff coming.